Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Family Law Talk. Family Law Talk. Presented by Kirk Stangy of Stangy Law Firm, PC, with offices in the Midwest. Stangy Law Firm is a family law firm. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stangy. Welcome to Family Law Talk. We have an interesting topic today. The topic is keeping a level head when reading pleadings. And this is based on an article on FamilyLawHeadquarters.com dated July 16, 2017. And the title of that article is Not Overreacting When Reading Pleading. So as a follow-up to the episode today, go on over to FamilyLawHeadquarters.com and check out the article over there. But let's go ahead and jump into the topic. Uh, the reality is when a divorce or family law case is filed, right, initial pleadings have to be filed as part of the case. And so generally speaking, to take divorce for an example, if somebody's going to file for divorce, right, they file a divorce petition uh, with the court. Uh, the other party, after they've been served, uh, files an answer to that, and then uh, uh, potentially a counter petition, and then the person who originally filed the case through their attorney, they file an answer to the counter petition. And then thereafter, right, other motions and pleadings can be filed as part of a case as well, right? And really the types of motions and pleadings that could uh, be filed could be, uh, you know, pretty vast. And certainly it can vary based on the case and it can vary based on the jurisdiction. And certainly it can vary on, on the exact type of case we're talking about. But the reality is, you know, most individuals uh, haven't received legal training, right? So they're not an attorney. Uh, they're not a paralegal. You know, they've never worked in any kind of environment where the law is involved. And for a lot of individuals, they might not have been through a case like this before, right? They're not used to court cases. They're not used to pleadings. They're not used to motions. And then all of a sudden they're reading uh, these items and reading these kinds of pleadings can feel a lot like Um, trying to understand a foreign language that somebody doesn't know, right? It can almost feel like if any of you have ever traveled to another country that speaks a different language than you're able to speak, right? Uh, It's confusing, right? And you're trying to understand, uh, but it's a little bit elusive. And and at times maybe you think you understand, but then maybe you've misinterpreted what somebody else said, uh, what somebody else uh, meant, and it can be frustrating and certainly legal pleadings and legal motions can have that same kind of feeling to it, right? And a lot of parties want to dissect it all, right? So they get uh, the written pleadings and they're reading it, right? And they're going line by line, word by word, and some of it makes sense, right? Some of it is very confusing. Uh, Some of it is very frustrating. And I think for just about anybody going through any kind of litigation uh, who doesn't have experience with it, and doesn't have legal training, I think this is all commonplace and pretty normal and almost to be expected. But what can happen um, for some individuals in some cases, and I think certainly family law is an area of law where this can be uh, particularly true, where there's high emotions, right? There can be a lot on the line, right? So people are stressed out, right? People are worried. Maybe they're angry. Maybe they're upset. And they're reading these legal pleadings and motions, and individuals can get hung up on specific words, uh, specific request, right? And some individuals, uh, the reality is they can overreact, right? They cannot keep a level head. In other words, they get upset and they read the pleadings and they read the motions, right? And, and ultimately they become unglued, right? And that could result in all kinds of bad things happening, right? Uh, that can complicate a case. Uh, uh, theoretically, people pick up the phone, call the other party, and they want to say things like, how dare you? How could you have your attorney file something that said X, Y, or Z in it, right? Uh, that could be an issue. Uh, sometimes an individual, right, can call their attorney, uh, be very upset, angry, uh, for example. And there might be other examples as well in terms of what people can do, right? But they just become upset. They become uh, even more stressed out and worried and anxious than maybe they were before. And to give you an example, uh, some of the things that can cause people to just, I mean, literally become uh, not level-headed. You know, in divorce and family law cases, it's very common, for example, for a party to request their attorney fees to be paid by the other party, uh, say divorce, say paternity case, say any kind of custody or child support case. I mean, a lot of pleadings, a lot of motions will just have a general uh, uh sentence in it that requests the attorney fees and so it might be in a numbered paragraph and then it might be in what we call the prayer which is the bottom of a motion or a pleading right 
And, and so folks sometimes can ask for attorney fees, right? And I can't tell you the number of cases I've seen through the years where this really upsets somebody. You know, they get the divorce petition uh, from their uh, soon-to-be ex-spouse, or they get, you know, the pleading or motion from the other party to request attorney fees, and they just just can't wrap their arms around it. That makes them very upset, very angry. They feel very betrayed. And it might even be uh, a case that might appear to be somewhat uncontested, but they still, the other party requested their attorney fees, and somebody just gets really upset about it, really angry about it, right? Um, and numerous other examples out there as well, you know, sometimes people – uh, through their attorneys and their pleadings can ask for things that seem overly lofty, uh, maybe a little bit ambitious. Uh, perhaps it might seem unfair to the party who uh, received the motion or pleading. Maybe it even seems uh, aggressive to give you another adjective, right? And, and so this can cause people to become very upset, again, uh, angry, stressed out. Uh, they don't uh, stay even keel. They don't stay level-headed, level right? They're upset. They're angry. They then pick up the phone and want to call the other party, or they call their attorney and run up a big bill talking about <clears throat> uh, what was requested in the pleadings and how they can't believe that somebody could ask for something that lofty, that ambitious, right? And they might even then want their attorney uh, to do all kinds of things in response, right? Maybe draw up a letter, you know, maybe file a motion response, or maybe they ask for lofty uh, or ambitious items as well, right? <clears throat> maybe they want their attorney to fire off uh, some, some uh, uh, motions or pleadings or you name it uh, in response. In other words, in a retaliatory way, not because, uh, you know, on, on their face they really want these things filed, but because, you know, in essence, you know, the other side asked for these things, so they're going to ask for really lofty uh, things themselves. Um, so again, this is very commonplace. Uh, this can happen for a lot of parties uh, when they're going through uh, these types of cases, right? It's easy uh, to overreact uh, by reading the pleadings and trying to dissect every sentence and getting hung up on a wording here or there, a phrase here or there, a specific request here or there. Uh, and, and it could just cause somebody more stress, more anxiety uh, than maybe they need to uh, really experience, and it can cause a party to uh, do things which can complicate a case or maybe run up their own uh, bill with their own attorney. So um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, what do you do if you're a party, you're going through a divorce or family law matter, right? Uh, you're reviewing a pleading like a motion or a petition or, or you know some other legal document, and you read something in it. And it just causes you, right, uh, to become unglued, right? It causes you to be upset. You know, what do you do? And, and listen, I'm an attorney, right? At the end of the day, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a mental health expert. Uh, but in a general sense, I can tell you uh, what's almost always the best thing to do is take a deep breath, you know, step back a little bit, right, versus instantaneously uh, picking up the phone and, and wanting to do something or engage in some kind of action that might be counterproductive, take a deep breath, step back, right, and then try to schedule a time to come in and see your attorney, you know. And, and, and oftentimes in person, you know, maybe you can do it over the phone, but just make sure, you know, when you have this conversation with your attorney, uh, about whatever it is that just sort of sets you off when you read the pleadings or the motion, just make sure you're in a place which I call sort of zen, right? You're in a calm place. You're in a cool place. Uh, you're in a rational place. You know, and for some people, this might make might take more time than others, right? Some folks can read something, become really upset, right, and sort of boil over and come back down quickly. You know, some people might need several hours, maybe even several days, sort of calm down, but get yourself to a Zen place, get yourself to a calm place, and then have a conversation with your attorney. Um, and, and again, it could be in person. Uh, theoretically, it could be on the phone as well. Just make sure it's not at a time uh, when you're feeling reactive, right? It's, a, it's at a time when you're calm, you're rational, right? Logic uh, is taken over versus emotions. And then what you need to find out uh, when you talk to your attorney, right, and if you don't have an attorney you're going through a divorce or family law matter, you ought to get one, right? You ought to get one that you're comfortable with. But if you don't uh, have one, I mean, look into getting one that you feel comfortable with, 
that certainly has experience in your area of the law, uh, but assuming you have one then, what you want to do is have a candid conversation with your attorney to find out, which is which is this, which is find out whether you have a, a legitimate reason for being upset, right? Because oftentimes attorneys can point out to you that, look, what the other side requested in this pleading or motion or whatnot, you know, it's really quite ordinary, right? It's not the kind of thing uh, that ought to set you off to DEFCOM, right, where you're in just sort of panic mode, right? So find out from your attorney, is there a reason to panic or is there really no reason to panic because this is something uh, quite ordinary at the end of the day, right? Uh, so I think that's one of the most important uh, questions uh, you want to get uh, from your attorney, right, when you're in a calms and place, right? Sometimes I would tell you uh, that people ask for things in pleadings and motions and other legal documents uh, that at the end of the day are more lofty than what they would actually take to settle the case, right? So a lot of individuals will ask for X, Y, and Z things in their pleadings and their motions, right? Um, but at the end of the day, they might settle for, for A, B, and C things, right, which might be much more reasonable and might cause uh, you or any individual going through a divorce or family law case to, to be more calm about what they've requested, right? A lot of times people do ask for more than what they would ultimately take to settle a case, and the viewpoint is – uh, of a lot of individuals that, I mean, you know, this is sort of posturing, if you will. You, t you ask for something that's sort of out there, and then you move uh, more toward the center to try to get the, the case resolved. And again, this is the type of question you want, you want to pose to your attorney and find out, right? Oftentimes your attorney can guide you and tell you, you know, this is very ordinary, or this is not ordinary, and maybe this is something to be somewhat upset or worried about. Uh, and, and then on the flip end, your attorney can help you as well, uh, determine whether or not this is just sort of posturing, this is a circumstance where somebody's asking for something very likely more than what they actually want, um, or whether or not the demand or whatever the what's in the pleading or motion is truly unreasonable, right? So again, really the premise of this is when you when you get divorce pleadings or family law pleadings or motions, right, don't overreact, keep a level head, uh, realize at the end of the day, uh, that uh, people ask for things uh, that might be more than what they'd actually ask for to get the case settled. And sometimes there might be language and pleadings and motions that have to be in there for really legal reasons. Uh, but at the end of the day, it might not be something in which you truly uh, need to become unglued over, right? So that is a topic today. I think it's definitely an interesting topic, and I think it's a good, a good rule of thumb for most individuals going through a divorce or family law matter. Again, as a follow-up to the episode today, Go on over to FamilyLawHeadquarters.com, check out the article dated July 16, 2017, titled, Not Overreacting When Reading Pleadings. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Stay tuned to our next episode coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk with Kirk Stange. Visit StangeLawFirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stange Law Firm to work for your family today. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements. Neither the Supreme Court of Missouri or Illinois reviews or approves certifying organizations or specialist designations. The information you obtain on this podcast is not, nor is it intended to be legal advice. You should contact an attorney for advice regarding your individual situation. We invite you to contact us and welcome your calls, letters, and electronic mail. Contacting us does not create an attorney-client relationship. Please do not send any confidential information to us until such time as an attorney-client relationship has been established. And finally, past results afford no guarantee of future results, and every case is different and must be judged on its own merits. Kirk Stange is responsible for the content. Principal Place of Business, 120 South Central Avenue, Suite 450, Clayton, Missouri, 63105. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? 
MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. Lucky Land Casino, asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.